My name is Michael Baltos. I'm from orderflows.com. And uh, thanks, Renee. Thanks, Investor Inspiration, for having me back again. It's always a pleasure to be here. And today I'm going to talk about uh, order flow. You know, people that uh, know me know I'm a big guy on, uh, on order flows. I'm, I'm really big on it. And, you know, the topic of today's uh, presentation is uh, order flow is nonsense. Um, you know, the reason why I... I chose that topic is because you know I, I post a lot of videos. I got a couple hundred videos on, on YouTube about order flow, and every once in a while I, I get uh, these guys posting uh, um, you know anonymously. Oh, you know order flows is useless. You know you got to rely on price action, or you got to rely on this. You got to rely on that. And you know what? Honestly, I, I don't buy it because you know I've built my entire trading career on on order flow. I've, I've traded professionally for over, over 20 years. I've traded practically every futures traded every exchange traded uh, futures contract in the world. And you know, one thing holds true is uh, order flow does apply in the markets. And you know, not only did I make a successful living, but I know a lot of people out there that trade with order flow that, um, you know, that's how they earn their living, trading um, with order flow. So my promise for you today is I'm gonna show you exactly how to find better trades with less risk and become successful in your trading using order flow without being confused, trying to figure out what order flow is, or constantly losing money due to bad trades based on poor market analysis. I, I really believe that once people understand uh, some of the, the way or ways order flow can be applied to the markets, it will help your trading and help you become a more successful trader. So today I'm going to explain, um, you know, who uses order flow in their trading and why you should too. Now I'm not saying you got to throw away everything you've ever learned about trading to learn order flow. No, you know, it's all about taking what resonates with you, what you can use in your trading to, be, to make yourself more success, successful, become a better trader. I'm going to show you what makes order flow different from other forms of market analysis. I'm going to explain why order flow is important, and I'm going to show you how to easily use order flow to understand the market, you know, and it's basically what comes down, what it comes down to is understanding the market is, is what's going to help you make more money trading. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to show you how to get a copy of my 150-page book, Trading Order Flow. Um, if you don't already have a copy, you can get it for free at the end of this presentation. You're not going to get an actual book mailed to you. I'm going to show you how you can download it uh, online um, from my website. But you got to stick around to the end to get that. So, you know, just give me your full attention, you know, for the next 45 minutes. And, you know, turn off your cell phones. Or, you know, I'll say turn it off, but at least turn it face down. So, um, you know, if anyone calls you, you can uh, talk to them later. More importantly, turn off Facebook. You know, Facebook to me is, is uh, a big time waster. Uh, my wife spends a lot of time on it. And, uh, you know, guys are just uh, mining your data now anyway, it seems. And if you're a futures trader or, you know, a forex trader or a stock trader, and you're serious about getting better results with order flow, the next 45 minutes can change your um, your, your, your life. You know, hopefully you can learn something and, and adapt order flow to your trading and become more successful. So for those that are new to me that have never sat on one of my presentations or, or listened to me before, my name is Michael Baltos and I've had over 20 years experience as, as an institutional futures trader. Um, in 2015, I started orderflows.com. Prior to that, I spent eight years as vice president of futures trading at JP Morgan. You know, where it was I was a trader. You know, I didn't sit in an office and just look at spreadsheets. No, I sat at the trading desk actually trading. Um, prior to that, I was a trading desk manager at Cargill for four years, where I traded pretty much everything around the world, you know, from Baltic freight to palm oil to rapeseed to white maize to wheat to um, bonds to stock indices, everything. Um, I spent three years at Commerce Bank, uh, as a big German bank, uh, as a licensed Eurex trader there. And prior to that, I spent a few years at EDF Mann and Dean Witter as well as on the global macro trading desks. And I started on the CME floor with Dean Witter actually in 1994. And I, and I left the floor once electronic trading started taking off. You know, CME had Globex, uh, CBOT had Project A, uh, NYMEX had um, Access, and yeah, I really felt the way of the future in the industry was going to be electronic trading. I was quite surprised at how fast it, it changed pretty quick, but uh, I, was, I was glad that I was able to position myself to take advantage of that. So, you know, I've, over those 20 years trading institutionally, I've taught many traders how to read order flow. I, I've traded with order flow myself. Even after I left um, the institutional side and I was trading for myself, I, I still continue to train with, with other traders. Um, teaching them how to use order flow. And, you know, when I started in the futures industry, I had 
I didn't know anybody. You know, I got a job as a runner on the CME floor, basically from a friend of a friend that I had never met before. Um, and nowadays, to get started in this industry, it's it's very difficult, right? You have to go to uh, the right college, you have to get the right degree, and you have to score high on tests and all that stuff. And you know, when I got started, the, the barriers to entry were a lot lower. However, now the the big difference is to get started trading. You can trade for yourself for less money than it took, uh, you know, back in the in the 90s you know and so you know there's great opportunities for those that want to get into trading um, you can you can uh, the barrier of entry is low you can start with um, you know smaller accounts and, and start going from there and, and getting your feet wet and get the experience that you need so you know imagine think to yourself imagine what life is going to be like when you can regularly find and take better trades with less risk and have more winning trades. I mean, that's what you want, right? You want to limit your risks and have more winning trades. You know, you don't have to worry about being confused with what's happening in the market or being constantly losing money, taking bad trades, you know, pretty much ever again. You know, you'll understand why you're in the trade rather than just say, oh, you know, it, it's the, the bar turned green, so I got to buy, or, you know, the there's a red arrow that says to sell. But you'll understand why it's happening and why you're taking the trades. You're going to be a trader, not a trade taker. And you know, imagine what it'll be like when you can use order flow and you're trading, even if you've never used order flow analysis before. You know, a lot of people, when they first start trading with order flow, they get confused, they get scared on what's happening in the market because there's a lot of numbers. But you know what? People have listened to me and people have taken my course, people have got my software, you know, and, and they write things to me like, Oh, Mike, you know, this is on my Facebook page. Um, you know, the order flow trader software is remarkably helpful. I can clearly see now what's happening in the market. For example, who's in control of the market on a very specific time, and who's getting weaker as well. You know, and that, that's that's the important thing. You know, is understanding what's happening in the market. You know, that's what's going to make you a better trader down the line. Now, again, the results are not typical. You know, I'm going to walk you through the analysis that I do myself and others are using to get great results using order flow. But understand, you know, my results are not typical because the average person who attends any training gets zero results. Because at the end of the day, you know, you could watch all the videos you want and, you know, attend all the trainings you want. But, but unless you take action and start trading with what you're learning, you're never going to get to that next level, right? And, you know, if you don't take that next step, if you don't take the baton, so to speak, and, you know, and run to the next level, you're never going to get there. But I'm happy to share with you, you know, for free, exactly what's working with me. That's why I like doing these presentations, because I could sort of give back to the trading community um, what I've learned over the years, what other people have shared with me. And, you know, order flow is not for people that are looking to get rich quick overnight. You know, you're not going to be able to go out and buy a Ferrari next week or get on a private jet. You know, if you're looking for a holy grail, you know, order flow is not a holy grail. But for me, you know, it, it's a way to consistently be profitable profitable in the market. And it's not for amateurs, you know, it's for people that are serious about trading, that, that really want to learn how to trade. But before I get started, you know, a brief disclaimer, um, you know, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only, should not be considered a solicitation of buyers, sell a futures contract, or make any other type of investment decision. Futures training contains substantial risk, it's not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for training, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading past performance not necessarily indicative of future results you know don't trade with money you can't afford to lose you know is, is basically it you know you you wouldn't go start a business with with money you can't afford to lose you know money that you need to live on you'll know, take care of your necessities first before you start trading or before you start um you know for that sense getting into business all right so what i'm going to cover today is is a few things i'm going to show you how with the right software computer can help you do the order flow analysis. You know, that's what computers were invented for, is to help humans do analysis, you know, crunch numbers. I wanna show you why order flow is not some new trading fad. You know, that that's why, you know, the, the topic of today's discussion is um, order flow is nonsense, is because, you know, people think that order flow is just some new thing. It's not, you know, if, if you've ever read the book, Market Wizards, you know, a lot of the traders in there refer back to this book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, which is from the you know the story of Jesse Livermore from the the, the 1920s, and in a sense he was a tape reader you know which in other words he's an order flow trader I mean nowadays you know everything's traded on a, it's we all look at computer screens you don't look at little ticker tapes that's where the term tape reader comes from but you know 
basically, you know, tape reading is, is a rudimentary form of order flow trading. And the last thing I'll share with you is, you know, what if you knew that a big trader, a big player in the market was quietly buying all the available supply of a commodity that sellers were selling until the sellers had no more to sell? Which direction do you think the market's going to go? Well, of course, it's going to go up. You know, if, if someone is there absorbing all the selling that's going on until the seller's got no more to sell, no more interest to sell, well, naturally, after the sellers are gone, there's no more downward pressure on price. Price will, will eventually start working its way higher. So the first thing, you know, with the right software, a computer can help you do order flow analysis. And, you know, one of the reasons why I created the order flows trader software for that uh, I offer on orderflows.com is because, you know, when I was trading for myself, you know, I was using an order flow software, a volume footprint chart, and it was just basic order flow footprint. And it didn't tell me anything other than what was happening in the markets. And, and I know from my times at, you know, at JP Morgan, you know, especially working with um, the developers of, of creating algos on what the analysis the computer can do. So I sat down with the programmer and I said, you know what, I want it to be able to look at a footprint chart, but I want the footprint chart to tell me where there's areas of price support and price defense, where there's price rejection, where there's trap traders, where there's supportive buying on moves up, where there's resistance selling on moves down, where there's divergence and, and, and other things, you know, to, to help me as a trader make better, faster decisions rather than have to analyze what's going on. I want the computer to do the analysis for me that presents it there on the screen that I'm able to um, make the decision in context of the market. You know, just because, you know, the, what you see is you know, there's something that says sell here, but you have to take everything in context of the market, right? The best selling opportunities are going to happen after a market rallies. The best buying opportunities are often going to happen, um, you know, after the market sells off. But there's also going to be opportunities, you know, as the market's moving higher, supportive buying on the moves up, resistance selling on moves down, that you're only going to see in the order flow, right? And, and that's what makes order flow so powerful. So give you some examples. So this is the order flows trader generated chart. It runs on Ninja Trader 7, Ninja Trader 8. You know, Ninja, if you're on Ninja Trader 7, you should really make the trade the switch to Ninja Trader 8. Um, you know, this is the new improved version, the 2.0 version, so to speak, that is going to be released publicly to this weekend. And there are a lot of little things that you can tell in the order flow that the software is helping you helping point out to you. So you know, at this low, you have a divergence, okay? Now, a divergence buy is when you have a new low and you have a positive delta, right? You're at a low and you have positive delta. That's what the order flow is telling you, saying, hey, you know what? You got aggressive buying coming in. And that's important, right? Because you're at a low, you would expect negative delta. You expect selling pressure coming in, not buying pressure. But if you see buying coming in, aggressive buyers coming in at a low, it, it could clue you into a great buying opportunity. And then when you have... A ratio. There's two types of ratios. This is something that I developed, and and several other software companies have adapted into their um, software. Is it tells you areas of price rejection or price support. In this case, um, you know, right after your divergence, you have a sign of price rejection. You got a blue number, which is a a, a ratio that I like, so I call the ratios. There's two types of ratios. There's price rejection and there's price um, support or resistance. So you know, really what I'm looking for is blue numbers, either below the bar for buying opportunities or above the bar for selling opportunities. If it's a black number, it's just your normal order flow. You know, the markets exist to facilitate trade. Not every bar is going to give you um, a sign of price support or price rejection. But when you see the signs of price rejection at lows or price support at lows, it gives you great opportunities, you know, low risk trading opportunities. And you can see how you've got your divergence, you have your ratio price rejection coming in. So you're at your low, you've got aggressive buying coming in, the market starts moving higher and the, the lower prices are being rejected. And then you start moving higher, you hit a high, swing high, you come off a little bit and you see supportive buying. You know, this is something that's new in the um, Ninja Trader 8 version the 2.0 of order flows trader it's going to tell you where supportive buying is coming in on on um, on any move and I find it very strong in moves that are ha happening already you know you get a little bit of a pullback but you got support coming in 
that's that's what's stopping this move and the market continues back up you know so it's because you know you just rally okay you hit a high swing high well what's going to happen are we going to sell off or we're going to continue higher you got to look for signs in the order flow and when you see that supportive buying coming in you can stay in your position you don't have to get out and then get back in later no you don't even have to get out you you're seeing the signs of supportive buying coming in and you can ride it further right everyone always talks about you know let cut your losses and let your winners run well you have to know when to let your winners run and if you have signs in the order flow saying you know stay in your position um you know the order flow is confirming that you know this this move is is really um strong that you've got the buying coming in then you know that's what you want right that's why you use order flow is to confirm the moves that you're in and you know cut your losses you know when, when the moves aren't working out now again this is the new thing that's in order flows uh, trader for ninja trader 8 is the what i call the prominent plc's and it's telling you where you're having support and resistance in the nt7 version this was called plc trader but i've had it put into the nt8 version and what it's telling you is it's important point of controls and oftentimes you see how markets can just bounce from a prominent point of control from a, a sell to a buy um, and then you got a supportive buying in here you got to sell up here. You got another buy down here. You know, sell up here. You can see lots of times in certain markets, especially interest rates, markets just bound back and forth. Oftentimes between these levels, it's uh, it's, it's quite strong actually. You know, this is Buns. You see how you got a swing high, a prominent point of control down to a swing low, um, back up to a swing high. The market comes off again. You know, and again, this is something that's that's new. We've taken in the previous version. We had what we called the the trap traders. We've expanded it a little bit and added uh, a few new new features in there to give a, a few more examples of, of trap traders in there. I'm not gonna really talk about that that much on this presentation, but really what it will show you is, you know, it'll show you a blue arrow, uh, sorry, a green arrow for potential, you know, traders that are looking for the market to go lower, but then the market rebounds and starts going higher. It's, it's great short-term trading opportunities. And it would be a red arrow above a, above a red bar if it was a selling opportunity, which I'll show you a bit later. And again, you know, you see here, this is Euro currency, right? You hit the swing low, you got a prominent point of control. So you know you got support coming in down here, right? Then you got a sign of um, trap traders here right afterwards. You get another sign, another prominent point of control in here telling you that that's the, you know, those, you got support of buying coming in. You know, and it sort of matches up to the previous low, actually. It's the same price level. So you know down at these lows, you've got support of buying coming in. So if you know you got support of buying coming in, why would you get short? You wouldn't. You wouldn't think the market's going to go lower. And all these guys that are, you know, play this little bounce up and looking for the market to come down, you know, you, you see these little green arrows here. It's telling you these guys are wrong. Yeah, and it's telling you in that bar that these guys are wrong. And you can see how the market you know, just reacts right off of it. Market just shoots higher, shoots higher. So sometimes, you know, the markets just really scream at you, you know, just tell you things that, hey, got to get short right now or you got to get long right now. This is a perfect example, right? You hit a swing high and you got a lot of things in the order flow telling you, get short. And, you know, if you break it down, you've got trap traders. That's this red arrow up in here telling you there's there's people that are long and wrong. People are looking for this breakout, looking for this move to go higher, and it's not happening. They're stuck. And then you've got a stack selling imbalance coming in. You've got the prominent point of control. So you know you got the resistance selling in there. And that's important because resistance selling is coming in at an area where you know traders were looking to, for a breakout and it's not coming in. And what you got is you've got supply coming into the market, sort of putting a cap on that market. And what happens is this market sells off. You got the negative deltas in here as well, so you know aggressive sellers are in control. And you know this thing, this, these happen daily. Um, you know, not, you know, it's not ten times a day, but you know they, they happen often enough that it's reliable. And you know when I talk about taking low risk trades, this is exactly what I mean. You know, you're getting short in this next bar after you, you just you look at this and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's so obvious. Where's your drawdown? You know, you're getting short and the market just sells right off. It's not like, you know, if you're trading with an overbought or oversold indicator and the market just sort of hangs around your entry price for a long time or, you know, goes to more overbought to more overbought before it finally sells off. No, you know right away, ideally, you know right away that the market's going to sell off. And where do you place your stop? Is you just place your stop right above 
that high of that bar where all the signs in there are telling you to get short because if we violate that high obviously you don't want to be in that trade so you know who uses order flow in their trading and why you should too you know a lot of people think that um, you know order flow is, is just used by you know local traders or you know small retail traders or day traders but actually hedge funds have been making big investments into order flow analysis and why is that is because in order flow, you get a lot of data points, and, and you know, hedge funds are big on crunching numbers. You know, on, on taking a lot of different data points and you know, extrapolating what they can out of it. You know, you got point of control in order flow. You've got delta, which is the net aggressive buyers versus net aggressive sellers. You got max delta. You know, how strong positive. You know, how strong buyers were in a bar and min delta, which is how strong net aggressive sellers were in a bar. Um, imbalances in the bar. You know, when when you have what's traded against the bid and the offer or by more than a, a certain ratio. And obviously you get volume, you know, there's, there's other little things in there as well, but you know, those are the main ones. And why is that important to you as a trader is because, you know, if hedge funds are now starting to really make in, you know, investments into analysis of order flows, because anytime you get into a position, right, you get long, well, you need the follow through buying to come in to help move the market in that direction. You know, if, if you get long and there's nobody else wants to get long, you're going to be long and wrong, right? What you need is, is people to also look at the, the same sort of data that you're looking at and make the same, come to the same conclusions to help move that market higher. And, you know, that's not limited to order flow. You know, macro traders, right, they rely on economic data numbers. You know, um, grain traders, right, they, they rely on how the crops are growing in the field, you know, and, and even the grain companies, they got their own inspectors that go into the field and they can see that information and, and they make their decisions based on that. And order flow, you know, is sort of a microcosm of that. You know, it's based on the volumes that's being traded and you're making, the, the, the well, excuse me, you're making your decisions based on that information. And that's important because, you know, without that follow through buying, you know, without confirmation, from other traders, you're not gonna get that move. You know, that's why I always get a bit of a chuckle from these guys that, you know, sort of haven't really ever traded, you know, and they, they, they post on Facebook, oh, I discovered this system, it's got 90% winners or 100% winners, no losers, you know, that they sort of discovered. But, you know, for the, the, the reality is it's not gonna happen because you need other people to be looking at those levels and also buying at those levels. You're not going to sit here and find, discover something that nobody else is looking at. If nobody else is looking at it, you're not going to get anybody else to agree with you and, and, and get the market to move in that direction. So another reason that, you know, a lot of traders think that order flow is nonsense is because they think that you have to constantly monitor every tick that trades in order to make a good trading decision. And, and that's, not how you should approach order flow. You know, if you're trading on a dome, the depth of market, yeah, maybe you monitor every tick. You live and die by every tick. I, I the way I describe trading with a dome is that um, you know it's like having a, a slot machine on your desk because you know you see so many numbers going through all the time. You get excited. It's like being in a casino. You know, you want to pull the levers um, on the on the slot machine. You know, because honestly, if you're looking at a dome, things are happening so fast. You see the market start ticking up. You want to get in and with order flow, with the volume footprint chart, it's sort of taking a step back. You know, it's looking at the whole chessboard and seeing what's happening and make your decisions based on that. You know, you can sit back, you can analyze what's going on on a bar by bar basis rather than a tick by tick basis and, and make your decisions. You know, it's a perfect example. You got a swing high, all of a sudden you've got negative deltas coming in. More importantly, you got a bearish ratio up here you know, this 0 0.1097. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily concerned with the number rather than what the color of the number is. You know, it's a ratio. So, you know, I, I'm looking for a certain threshold to be um, met. And if it's met, then I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't necessarily have to analyze the actual number and, and choose one number over another or how stronger it is. No, you know, it's, it's a ratio. So I'm concerned with um, you know, whether it meets that threshold or not. Then I see aggressive sellers coming in. I see stacked imbalances. And again, you know, this is just the market telling you, hey, this is a great selling opportunity. You might want to consider getting short. 
And you know, again, where's the drawdown on this trade? It just makes the move that you're looking for. Again, you know, not all moves are going to be so pretty. You know, sometimes it might go a little bit sideways before making that move, or sometimes it might just go sideways and you decide to get out. But oftentimes, you know, you get these great setups like this. And this is information you're only going to get on a volume footprint chart. You're not going to see on a on a bar chart. And again, you know, it's about looking for signs in the order flow, letting the market reveal itself to you what's happening. You know, here you have trap traders at the high. That's what this red arrow is. You've got prominent point of control. That's what this point of control is shaded red, uh, sorry, magenta. You got um, stack selling imbalances up in here. It's telling you this is a great selling opportunity up here. You know, you got the negative deltas as well at a swing high. And what happens is, is you sell off from the 2711 area down to this 2705-04 area. And what do you got down at this low? You got trapped traders at this low. People late into this move down saying, oh, you know, we're selling off. We just sold off five points. I also want to sell. Then they're realizing they're wrong. They're, they're stuck. They're short in the hole. You got the prominent point of controls telling you there's support coming into the market. And the market, the only difference you don't have here is you don't have the um, stack buying imbalances. But you'll notice also the delta is, is tar starting to turn positive. It's starting to pick up 13, 23, 674. And the market moves back up to 2711. So you could catch the move down in this case, catch the move back up. And you know that, that's what you, those are those, those moves that you love as a trader. You know, when you take advantage of the move down and, and then you take advantage of the move back up. Now, you know, one of the things that really bother me is when I read posts by people saying, you know, ah, oh, order flow is, is just the latest trading fad. And it's not, you know, it's people that don't understand the markets that have never really ventured outside of trading with an indicator or something, you know, trading with other than things other than moving averages, never done research into the markets, don't understand that, um, you know, order flow has been around for well over 100 years. You know, I mean, the whole thing, um, the ticker tape is, revolves around order flow, right? That is the, um, how to say, you know, that was the order flow back in, in the 1920s is, is people standing around reading the ticker tape, what was trading. And if you ever read the book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, you know, the story of Jesse Livermore, um, you know, he was a tape reader. He read the tape. So, you know, and that's back in the 1920s. You know, we're 100 years from that. So it's it's been around for a long time. Many people have used it. And, Many people have made very good money trading with order flow. So what makes order flow different from other forms of market analysis is it allows you to see what's happening right now in the market. It allows you to see where real support and resistance exists. You can see where aggressive buying and aggressive selling is declining or is accelerating. And that's important information. You know, if, if aggressive buyers are all of a sudden declining, the market might not be moving much higher for a long time period of time, you know, it could start selling off. You can see things happening in the market that you would not otherwise see on a normal bar or candlestick chart. So, you know, the ratio and divergence, this is my bread and butter trade. Um, I'm always looking for this trade and it happens, you know, it happens almost daily in every market. Sometimes you don't get them, you know, because what a divergence is based on is, is a new or equal high with um, negative delta or a new or equal low with positive delta. And the div ratio is, you know, obviously based on the order flow. But when you get them together, either you get them the divergence and the ratio in the same bar, or the divergence and a ratio in the next bar. You know, these are the go-to trades. It's just, a, just take them. It's the market telling you um, that it, that it's ready to make a move. That either this, the higher or the low is going to be the higher the low for now. Later, you may take it out, but you know, for now, it's, it's telling you that this this low is going to hold or this high is going to hold. And you can see here, um, you know, right on the low, you get your ratio and divergence, and then the market makes a nice move from 117.95 all the way up to 118.20. Um, you know, and on the opposite side, there's a ratio and divergence. This is the sell. And you got your divergence up here at that high. You got your bearish ratio up there, the blue number. Notice you have black numbers. That's just your normal order flow. But when you have the blue number, that's the time to stand up and take notice. And you can see the market moves from the high. Um, you know, we make a nice five-point move lower. And this is happening at midnight. So, you know, it happens around the clocks. So even if you're trading in the middle of the night, you're still looking for the same things. You can see real-time resistance with order flow. You know, this is the prominent point of controls. You got your 
you sell off, you rally a little bit. It's not a big rally, it's kind of hidden in there. But you got a prominent point of control. You've got resistance selling in there. And what do you do? You sell off, you rally right back up to that level where you had the resistance selling before, and then the market hits that level, you still have the sellers in there. And what happens? The market sells off. If you were to rally back up here and you don't have that resistance selling, chances are the market's gonna go higher. Right? It's not it's just a case of, well, I got resistance selling and I have to get short. Well, no, you read the order flow. If you don't have resistance selling up in here, chances are you can trade it the opposite way, that the market is going to continue going higher. You know, here's one, there's support. Right? You got your prominent point of control here. You came right down to the exact same level and you started making that move higher. Again, you know, if, if you're not seeing any sort of supportive buying down in here, what's going to happen is chances are the market is going to keep going lower. Right. If these buyers were here earlier, but they don't appear later when you come in there, what's going to support that market? But if these buyers that were here earlier reappear here later, that's going to give you that support. And that's something that you're not going to see on a bar chart by itself, unless you're looking at the volume. Now, aggressive selling, shifting into aggressive buying, and this is important, right? Because not a lot of people really understand this concept is this is a order flow delta, right? Order flow delta usually runs along the bottom. And what it is, is the difference between net buyers and net sellers in the bar. So if it's negative, it means net sellers took control of the bar. If it's positive, you have net buyers, net aggressive buyers in the bar. And you often see it happening around highs or lows, swing highs and swing lows, is you'll see it shifting, right? You're coming down in here, net aggressive selling, all negative delta. And then you start going sideways, but what are you seeing? You're seeing positive deltas, 330, 13, 223, 674. This is actually what I call the delta surge. I have that indicator on my website you can download for free. And what it does is it reads these, these changes in the delta on areas where, you know, buy aggressive buying is starting to come in, or, you know, if it was negative, it'd be aggressive selling. But, you know, that's the shift, right? That's the shift from supply and demand, you know, from in this case, it was a supply driven market. Now it's starting to take over into a demand driven market, right? The demand is coming back in at these low levels and it's moving it back up to where we were before. Now, there's another thing that order flow helps you with, you know, you're at your high of the day, you have a divergence. Okay, and what does that mean? You're at your high of the day, you have negative delta. You're at your high of the day, and imagine, you're at your high of the day, you got aggressive selling coming into the market. What do you think is gonna happen? You think the market's gonna go higher? or the market's gonna sell off. Well, if you're at your high and you got net aggressive selling, chances are the market's gonna sell off. It could sell off short term, it could sell off long term. What you gotta do is you start looking at what's happening in, in the next couple of bars. So you have your ratio, then boom, you got your, sorry, you got your divergence, next bar you got your ratio, right? And again, that's one of my bread and butter trades, your ratio, sorry, your divergence and then your ratio, but still you got negative deltas in here. So chances are, you're gonna sell off. You know, so you got a few things working in your favor in the analysis. Even in here, you got a prominent point of control telling you you got resistance selling in here. So even if you miss this set up here, you come in a bit later and say, hey, I got, I got resistance selling in here, I could still get short. There's still that opportunity. And you know, you got a nice five point winner there in the S&Ps. So let me ask you this, you know, if, if you knew that a big player was quietly buying all the available supply of a commodity and that sellers were selling until they had no more to sell, which direction do you think the market will go? And you know, I'll put it to you this way, right? If there's no more sellers in the market, say the market's selling off, selling off, selling off, it reaches a level where there's, there's buyers down there and everyone is just, the buyers absorbing all the selling, that finally the sellers don't have any more to sell. Which way do you think the market's gonna go? Well, if there's no more selling pressure on the market, the market generally will naturally start rising higher, right? And, and those are great trading opportunities. And uh, the best way to explain it is, you know, the traders that think that order flow doesn't matter, that really what matters is price action, they are missing what I think is one of the most important parts of trading, if not the most important part, and that's volume. Now, on the trading floor, when there was still trading pits, right, you would talk about volume two ways. You would talk about volume and then the number of contracts going through, but more importantly, you talk about volume on, on how loud it was on the trading floor in the particular pit, right? If there's a lot of trading going, active trading going on, it'd be very loud. Everyone would be yelling and screaming, you know, shouting, you know, arm to arm with everybody. Um, that's one way you could tell how active the market was. Now on a screen, you can't 
can't tell that. You don't have the, the sound volume. But what you can see is the actual trading volume going through on the screen. And if you know, you're just looking at price by itself and not taking into account volume, you're missing an important thing because you're treating, in that case, you're treating every price the same, whether it trades three contracts or whether it trades 3,000 contracts. And you can't do that. You can't treat each price the same. You have to take it differently. You have to approach it differently. And it's, it's the way I describe it is like um, a dog, right? Not all dogs are the same. You could go to your friend's house as a dog. You know, he may have one of those dogs that to get into the house, the dog is in front of the door. You got to push the door and push the dog out of the way. Or you could go into the house, you know, like my sister's house with a dog just constantly barking at you. You know, you wouldn't treat both dogs the same way. You know, the first dog, you're fine. You'd be happy to pet. The second dog, you know, you want to put a muzzle on. Um, and it's the same way, you know, with, with prices. You can't treat each price the same, right? It's based on the volume traded. And a perfect example is, is understanding the markets. Like I said, I've had the fortune, good fortune of, of trading just about every exchange traded future in the world. And I've, I've, one thing that I've learned is when you have heavy volume in the market, it's going to tell you that, you know, that's just natural support or natural resistance oftentimes. And if you could break that level, chances are you're going to continue breaking. But if those levels hold, you know, those are oftentimes the starts of great moves. So, you know, it's a perfect example is the E-minis, e which rally up a little bit, come off, and you got heavy volume, you know, volume that's much heavier than any of the previous volume in recent history, 3,407 here. And what happens? That's your support of buying coming into the market, right? People are buying it, getting it higher. It comes off a little bit, but then a big buyer steps in. A big buyer steps in to absorb all the selling that's going on. Once all the sellers are done selling into that, you know, they, so it's got no more bullets left, so to speak. And what's going to happen is the market will start naturally rising up. Why is that? Because you got a big buyer in the market. Big buyer so, you know, basically supporting that market and it's especially important in the middle of moves. You know, not a lot of people realize everyone's always looking for the support of buying coming in at lows and or resistance selling coming in at highs, but you often get them in moves and those are extremely, extremely important and great signs for you know great trading opportunities. You know, what I just showed you was was in the middle of a move. Now here's one, you know, that's at the end of a move. You come down, coming down, you've got strong buying in here. Um, you know, 1,000, 1,400, 1,700, 2,000. You test those levels again, you still got another 800 in there. So you still got supportive buying coming in here, right? Finally, the sellers capitulate, they give up, they got no more to sell because there's there's such a big buying interest at these levels that the sellers, they give up, they got no more to sell. And what happens is the market just naturally rises. You know, why does markets rally? Oftentimes is not just on buying, is, is because there's no more selling pressure. You know, and you know, this is euro currency again. You know, it comes down to understanding what's heavy volume for your markets. There was, I don't have my charts open right now, but on this PC, but you know, it happened also this morning at around in the lows in the uh euro currency. This is euro currency from the other day. This is a high, you got 494 up here, but this morning in the euro currency, trade about 700 and something at the just right off the low, and then the market rallied a nice rally off that. But this was um at a swing high in the um, euro currency you got heavy volume up here 167 um, 494 119 what happens right after you hit that level market just sort of dribbles around comes right back up to that level here it gets within one tick of that point of control before finally selling off you know the, the sellers the buyers that are coming in here are realizing you know you still got those sellers in there you know whether they're looking at a book or whatever i don't know but the, the most often most likely is that you have, still have the selling pressure up in here, people with heavy offers up in here, that's causing, you know, sort of putting its foot on the market that the market sells off um, from the, there. So why is order flow important? It's because it's about scoring, right? It's about, you know, it's like putting the, you gotta be the guy that puts the ball in the back of the net. And that's where order flow comes in. You know, you gotta be the guy that's gonna score the touchdown, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna score the goal, make the basket, you know, at the end of the game. And that's where the order flows trader software comes in. You know, it, it helps you see these areas. You know, here you have a swing high. You've got trap traders coming in here. or not trap traders coming in. Rather, you've got trap traders stuck at 
these high levels, that's what these red arrows are telling you. And again, it makes nice short-term trading opportunities, you know, from the 118.44 area, 118.42, down into the 118.22 on the euro currency. Um, you know, you've got your ratio and divergence down here at this low. You've got, um, you know, traders being short in the hole. They're trying to short it get short thinking the market's going to start selling off and it doesn't you've got signs in with the ratios of price support in here as well so it's like all signs are, are telling you that hey it's a great buying opportunity in that market you know people like to complicate trading they might make things more complicated than it really needs to be and you know even if you're just using point of controls you know, you're seeing you know opportunities for selling up and at near the highs buying opportunities near the lows you know, that, that, that's what you want to see as a trader. And, you know, at times you got to start putting it all together. It really makes the market make sense. And you got your prominent point of controls up in here. You know, you're just sort of going sideways, but you got selling pressure coming in here with the prominent point of controls. You got stack selling and balance coming in here. And what happens? Market sells off, you know. What would you rather be at this point? Someone puts a gun to your head, hey, get long or get short. Well, based on what I'm seeing in the order flow, I got to get short. There's not many reasons to get long here. You have one prominent point of control, but you know what? You're staring every time you sort of come back up into this area of uh, 120.05, you got selling pressure coming in here. You got one, two, three prominent point of controls telling you you've got resistance selling, you got stack selling and balance, you got you know more selling and balances in these other bars. It's it's all leaning up towards you know giving you a low risk trading opportunity. If you break this swing high up here, you're not going to want to be short. Period. You know that. Well, look at your potential, right? You're getting short somewhere around the 120.05 area. Your stops 120.07. For what? To go from 120.05 all the way down to 119.80. You know, those are those high risk, uh, sorry, the low risk uh, with big reward trades. So hopefully you're enjoying this webinar so far. And I, I think you should, because I've covered a lot. You know, I showed you how with the right software, computer will do the order flow analysis for you. I showed you that order flow has been around a long time and I showed you how to read what's happening in the market to see what big buyers or sellers are doing. Now, if you want to take your order flow analysis and take your trading to the next level, um, I've, I've, you know, let me know because that, that's what I'm here for. That's why I do these presentations to help you get to the next level. So I have what I call the order flows trader all in software package. And it really, it's going to help you make you know, your, your trading a lot easier. And Basically, it's going to help you find better trades with less risk, make better trading decisions, and it'll help you do it fast. You know, uh, you, you got to be up to speed soon in trading. You know, forget about taking six months to learn how to trade. You know, you're not going to go start a job and then they give you six months to learn how to do the job. And, and trading is the same way. You know, you got to get up to speed fast. So what you're going to get is you're going to get the order flows trader software, the order flows, the new one, which is runs on NT8. And it's got five built-in order flow analysis to tools. That's one more than the previous version. Um, it's, it's the prominent point of controls in there. You're gonna get my Ninja Trader templates. You're gonna get access to my order flows training course, which is a 15-hour video course on order flow analysis. Basically, take you from the beginning up to where you need to be. And we give you my trading setups, what to look for in, in the markets, right? Because it's one thing to have software, but you gotta know what to look for. The value for all that is, is over $1,700. But the bottom line is, if um, you know all you got was just the software, I think that would be worth it. But because of investor inspiration, I'm gonna give you more. I'm gonna give you access to the order flows inner circle, which is a thousand dollar value, basically 997. It's advanced order flow training. There's about 50 hours worth of advanced training in there. That takes the value up to you know close to $2,700. But you can get it get it all for just um, you know 1,250 today, period. Um, you know no more costs, no more nothing. Um, you just got to pay for your data feeds and you know through your broker, which some brokers will actually give it to you for free. Others will just cost you like five dollars a month. But you go to orderflows.com/all-in to get started. You know I've shared a lot of information with you today, but as you know, information alone is not going to save you. You need the orderflows trader software because that's what's going to get you to the next level with your trading. And again, you know, don't pay, you know, there's, there's other software out there that's going to charge you five times more than what I'm charging you, but with uh, less instruction and, and less, you know, opportunities in the market because they're just basically giving the software and say, hey, go on, figure it out yourself. Whereas I give you, you know, all the additional education that you need to get you going. And more importantly, you know, I got a money back guarantee. If you're unhappy with it, if it doesn't work for you, fine. You know, an order flow is not for everybody. 
um, let me know and, and you get a refund. I'll just refund you your money. Um, you know, it happens. I, I just I, I realize it's not for everybody, but um, you know, if you think that it's just not for you, fine, it's just not for you. So what you do is go to orderflows.com and uh, type in uh, orderflows.com slash allin.html and it takes you to this page. Just scroll down to the bottom. You know, there's, there's videos on there and there, there's charts, examples for you to take a look at. Go to the button that says I'm all in and it'll take you to PayPal. PayPal processes it. I don't get your credit card. I don't want that information. It's all processed through PayPal. Then it'll, it'll, you'll get up and running um, pretty quick. So again, you can get started. It's just 12.50 period. And it's much a better deal than, than you're gonna find out there anywhere else, honestly. I, I get a lot of people coming to me that have spent three, four, five times as much money on that order flow software. And you know they, they feel like they, they, they wasted a half a year of their life and, and a lot of money trying to figure out order flow. So if, if you stuck around and you wanna copy my book, Go to orderflows.com slash book and .html and it'll ask you for your name and email. You'll get added to a list. So when I do presentations, you'll be uh, alerted to them. So and then it'll take you to the download page that you get my book and uh, you know you can download it to your smartphone or your tablet or whatever and, and read it at, at your leisure. So again, to get started, just go to uh, orderflows.com slash all in .html and, you know, and click the button that says, uh, I'm all in because you know at the end of the day, it's up to you. Right? You got to get started. Don't ask yourself a year from now, why didn't I get started back then? You know, get started now.